cliffhanger from the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark, a marvelous new adventure film that is just one of four new movies we'll be reviewing this week on Sneak Previews. Across the aisle from me, Roger Ebert, film critic of the Chicago Sun-Times. And across the aisle from me, Gene Sisko, film critic of the Chicago Tribune. In addition to Raiders of the Lost Ark, we'll also be reviewing Federico Fellini's new fantasy, City of Women, and Simone Signore and I Sent a Letter to My Love. And now Gene starts with a movie that's had some tough going recently. It's called Cutter's Way. Cutter's Way is a species known in the movie business as a difficult film, one that's difficult to categorize, difficult to sell, difficult to describe. Cutter's Way was recently released in New York City under the title Cutter and Bone, and it did zilch business under that title. That's a shame because the retitled film, now called Cutter's Way, is full of good things. It's the story of a sort of combination murder mystery and strange love triangle. Jeff Bridges plays a young man who can't make a commitment to himself or to a job or any other person. He just drinks a lot. And after an all-night toot, he becomes a suspect in the murder of a teenage girl. The other members of the love triangle are John Hurd, playing a crippled Vietnam veteran, and Lisa Eichhorn, playing Hurd's wife. At a Mexican Day parade in Los Angeles, they spot a man who Jeff Bridges believes he saw at the scene of the crime, a powerful and wealthy Californian. Hey, look at the silver in that horse's mouth. Huh? You think you can mug a horse? Hi there. I think we can mug a Palomino. Oh. Hey! Arrest me! Lock me up. Hey, kid. You out. And now, representing Port Industries. Hey, now we're getting down to it. Hardcore. <laughs> Background. Breeding. Genealogy, sociology, rich, 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 rich. <laughs> For an honest to God dynasty, you need family. What do you say, Mo? That's him. That, that looks like the guy I saw at the trash can. And the honorary presidency of the parade. Who? That guy? No, this guy right here. That guy? This guy, right? That's the guy who saw the trash can? that scene, you can see that Cutter's Way is straining to be sort of a California mystery, much like Chinatown. Well, it's not in that class, but it does develop a strong sense of foreboding. The two men later hatch a plot, along with the murdered girl's sister, to try and extort money by blackmailing that man on the horse, claiming that they know he was involved in the murder. Well, if he pays the extortion money, they've got him. But Lisa Eichhorn, the woman in the love triangle, says that's a stupid idea. Wait a minute. You're going to blackmail J.J. Cord, and if he pays, you're going to turn him over to the cops with the money. Is that right? Well, don't be abusive, Mo. Abusive, Alex? How could anyone be abusive with the three of you? A band of would-be extortionists? Really? Now, wait a minute. Hold just one little minute here. 
And let me refresh your burnt out little memory. Valerie here did just lose her sister. You with me so far, you want a drink. And if Cord killed her, very likely, it seems to me that whatever we do falls under the heading of justice. Justice. Pure and simple. Simple, Alex. Hardly pure. Dishonorable and gutless. Oh, you know a lot about guts, do you? Oh, you bet I do. Guts is hanging around in this pigsty month after month waiting for you to get the nerve to start living again. And what does it get me? You and your cronies in the playpen planning a dumb crime. I don't see much use in this. I'm gonna go. You're a little charmer, aren't you? I mean, your sister's, what, two days in the ground and you're already planning how you're gonna cash in. We're not gonna keep the money. Uh, give me a break, will you? Richard, I'm going. Wait a minute, hold it. This was your idea, Bone, telling little Mama all about it. Speak up. He's got nothing to say, Alex. Oh, of course not. He's got nothing to say. When does he ever have anything to say? But what about you? You're not some saint avenging the sins of the earth, you know, Alex. And if you are, what am I doing here? Oh, I know. I'm like your leg. Your leg? Sending messages to your brain and there's nothing there anymore. I wouldn't. You all right? Yeah. You think this is the first time? You make it the last, Alex. Whatever you say, partner. Those characters seem fresh to me, not like most movie characters. This is a film that you're going to have to seek out if it does come to your town. It won't last long. It hasn't been made to please a wide audience. But I was intrigued by the characters, by their relationships, and by the murder mystery itself. So I strongly recommend Cutter's Way. I strongly do not recommend Cutter's Way. I strongly? Was very, yes. I was very disappointed by it. I felt that uh, the director, Ivan Passer, who's a Czech immigrant, has been making some films in Hollywood, wanted to make two films, and he wanted to make one that was commercial, the murder mystery, mm -hmm. and one that was a statement about a returned crippled Vietnam veteran. I think that was kind of his coming home. And this movie doesn't succeed in being either one of those things. It tries to develop the character on the one hand, and yet he's given all kinds of stick. He isn't given real three-dimensional characteristics that we can believe in. He's got the eye patch and the cane and everything, mm -hmm. but there's not really a person there. I thought he was really a small part of the story. I get a knee-jerk reaction negatively when I see another Vietnam veteran, another mm -hmm. walking time bomb, too. But I thought he was really limited in the story, and there were very few references other than his physical disabilities. I got involved much more in the relationship of this one guy, the Jeff Bridges character, uh -huh. the drunk who couldn't commit to anybody, mm -hmm. this woman who was sort of caught between two guys who she couldn't count on, and I really followed the murder mystery. I got excited about it. Well, the, the mystery, I've been through that in a lot of thrillers I've read and seen on the screen, and as far as their relationship, I felt it was repetitive. They had the same scene three different times in the movie. Yeah. You know, who are you? What are you really looking for? Why can't you commit? That was the guy's Wait problem. Wait 20 minutes, they play the same scene again. But that was the guy's problem. Why was it the guy's problem? Because that was the character that was in the movie. Yeah, but the character in the movie was just a character because he had that problem. He didn't have the problem for any three-dimensional reason. Well, I thought it was just a, a very common problem, a guy that just couldn't settle down okay, and so commit to something. One yes, one no. I think okay. we got that across, yeah. <laughs> Federico Fellini's new film is a fantasy about feminism named City of Women. It's a visual extravaganza, an anthology of many of the images that Fellini has made famous over the years, and that's one of the problems with it. It's a return to material he's used many times before, and he doesn't seem to have anything new to say about it. This movie's going to look curiously familiar to anyone who's seen Fellini's Eight and a Half or Juliet of the Spirits. City of Women stars Fellini's favorite actor and autobiographical stand-in, Marcello Mastriani, and the story of a man who goes on a dream journey through his sexual memories, recalling the women who inflamed his fantasies.
trovò un bel schiaffone, a te basme. Vieni qui. Quando pochi c'è, quando pochi c'è, ricordi ancora la te si vedono. Ti riapori no, ti riapori no. Un tuo ricordo, te le vedi? Aspetta, aspetta, mi... That roller coaster made out of lights is right out of Fellini's favorite fantasy. I don't think he's ever made a movie that didn't have the circus in it somewhere. But if you're a veteran Fellini watcher, it's easy to see Fellini borrowing there from himself. Marcello's descent down the slide or the roller coaster is from one of the most famous moments in Juliet of the Spirits. The woman on the beach is right out of eight and a half, and those childhood memories remind us of Amicord and other movies. There are no new ideas in this film, and especially no new ideas about feminism, which is supposed to be the film's subject. Fellini still categorizes women in only three ways, as untouchable goddesses, as carnal sex objects, or as efficient authority figures. He doesn't often allow his women characters to have the complications of real people. Mm -hmm. But what if you haven't seen all of Fellini's films and you don't know them all by heart? Is City of Women worth seeing on its own merits? I think that's a real close call. Personally, I'd never miss any Fellini film because I find his whole career so interesting. But unless you're that interested, I don't think I can recommend uh, City of Women. It's an uninspired shuffle through Fellini's same old deck of images. Well, now we're seeing eye to eye. I don't have much enthusiasm either about the film. And, you know, I didn't think Fellini had much enthusiasm about funny, it as yeah. I watched mm -hmm. it. It was sort of lifeless, which is the last thing you would think to say about a project mm -hmm. of his. Also, I question, this is sort of interesting, this is a very topical film, feminism. Mm -hmm. um, we see the fragility of dealing in topical issues in movies because I think if this film had come out five, ten years ago, mm -hmm. we might have thought it was aggressive and Fellini tackles mm -hmm. an interesting mm -hmm. subject. Now, he doesn't surprise us one bit. Marcello Mastroianni learns that he has trouble dealing with yeah. the strong women. So what? I was more interested in the older Fellini films where he was dealing with himself, how he felt about women. That's always interesting to me, how the director feels, not how he thinks the world feels or how we feel or how we ought to feel and I wonder if Fellini didn't occasionally even say to himself gee I'm just recycling old material because this is almost an anthology of images it really is a big disappointment mm -hmm. our next film I sent a letter to my love is not what I expected I expected it to be a smarmy old love story between an old spinster and her crippled brother but I sent a letter to my love is a little bit better than that I think it has a bitter edge to it properly representing the downbeat attitude of older people who feel alone in the world. Simone Signore stars as the spinster who reluctantly takes care of her brother played by Jean Rochefort. Crippled since his childhood, he desperately wants the touch of another woman. It's a man. Oui, no, for comme ça. Merci, tu gentil. Louise. Viens voir, Louise, viens. Viens voir. Pousse tes mains sur mes yeux. Well, so much for him. In order to satisfy her own needs for a friend, Simone Signore places a companionship wanted ad in a newspaper, and she gets a reply from, surprise, her brother. 
while she continues the ruse, writing to him using another identity. And the game gets sort of out of hand when she hires a local actress to pretend she's the letter writer and pay a visit to her brother. Together, the sister and brother talk about the pen pal's impending visit. He's really excited to meet this woman. She's due to arrive in just a few minutes. On est bien d'accord, hein? Quand elle arrive, je la fais entrer, je l'installe ici, et je vais te prévenir dans ta chambre. Puis moi, je, je m'en vais, discrètement, en silence. Oui. Oh, attends! Comme tu désires ne pas être dérangé, comment je vais savoir, moi, quand elle sera partie? Parce que je veux pas rester là, cachée derrière la porte tout ce temps-là. Ah, oh, ben. Je voudrais le balai devant la fenêtre de la cuisine. Qu'est-ce que tu en penses Ah, très bonne idée. Ça marche pour le balai Va pour le balai. C'est que t'es formidable, Louise. Si jamais tu rencontres quelqu'un, je te jure que je ferai la même chose pour toi. Tu sais, avec une vieille fille de, de mon genre, euh, tu risques d'attendre très très longtemps avant que je mette des, des balais aux fenêtres. Ben Regarde-moi, avec mon fauteuil, j'ai bien réussi à me placer, par correspondance, mais... Pour moi, un homme, c'est différent. C'est elle. Comment je suis Tu es très beau. Oui, Suisse. Je connais ma bonne chance. Expect a happy ending? I did. Instead, what we get is something more perplexing, a combination of fatalism for the man and just desserts for Simone Signore. Within its own world of loneliness and resentment, I sent a letter to my love is worth seeing. Well, here we have another complete disagreement. I hated this movie. Hate? I think so, yes. Strongly disliked it. It was smarmy, sentimental, it was corny, it was a soap opera. The one central thing in the movie was never made clear, and that is how does Simone Signore feel about her brother? All right, let me... Does she want to have a relationship uh -huh. with him? Does she want to have a vicarious relationship through the male? When she brings in the actress, does she want them to have a relationship? Right. Uh, at uh, the end, Roger, how does she feel? All right, but look, well, but look, you at least went through all those thoughts, those different kinds of thoughts mm -hmm. about the character. Now, you say that's because it's confusing. Mm -hmm. I say because the film is a little more complex than we expect, and so all of those issues come up. And you know what I think the answer to it is? You know what? I, Honestly, that all three of those things that you just mentioned are inside her. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a, this director, Moshe Mizrahi is his name, mm -hmm. he made a lousy film that we both agreed on. Madame Rosa. And had all the problems that you just described to this film. I think this is a step up from that. And well, I disagree. Okay. I think you should have directed it because you understand it better than he did. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we come to the most exciting and entertaining new movie to come along in a long time, Raiders of the Lost Ark. This one is a really great movie. It's a nonstop roller coaster ride of thrilling adventures, weird characters, daring exploits, and cliffhanging close calls. It's fun for a lot of reasons, but the best reason is the film's inexhaustible supply of dangerous situations. It never lets go. It moves at breakneck speed. It throws developments at us so fast we don't know when to duck. Raiders of the Lost Ark stars Harrison Ford as an intrepid American archaeologist. In this opening scene, he's trying to outsmart the booby traps in a South American temple. Throw me the idol. I throw you the whip. 
Give me the whip. Adios, señor. Now that's just the beginning while the film is getting warmed up. Later on he gets in some really tight situations that are really difficult. Harrison Ford plays a much different character here than he did in Star Wars. He's older, he's more ragged, he's more like Humphrey Bogart, and they give him the Bogart look with that hat and the three-day beard. He's right out of the treasure of the Sarah Madre. His co-star in the movie is Karen Allen. She plays a tough, resourceful American woman who was once jilted by the heartless Harrison Ford, and her response to that was to move to Tibet, open a saloon, and have a drinking contest with the Sherpas. <laughs> One day, some unexpected customers turn up, sadistic Nazis who want a golden medallion that holds the secret to the location of the Lost Ark. <laughs> We are, we are not thirsty. What do you want? The same thing your friend Dr. Jones wanted. Surely he told you there would be other interested parties. He must have slipped his mind. The man is nefarious. I hope for your sake he has not yet acquired it. Why, are you willing to offer more? Oh, almost certainly. Do you still have it? No. But I know where it is. Hey, how, how about a drink for you and your men? Your fire is dying here. Why don't you tell me where the piece is right now? Listen, Aaron Mac. I don't know what kind of people you're used to dealing with. Nobody tells me what to do in my place. Fraulein Ravenwood, let me show you what I am used to. Nick! Take your lousy hands off! Wait a minute. Well, I, I can be reasonable. That time is past. You don't need that. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, I'll tell you everything. Uh, yes. I know you will. Uh, 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 Let her go. Saved in the nick of time, but that's only the easy stuff. Wait till she sees what she still has to get through in this movie. Raiders of the Lost Ark was made by two of Hollywood's most talented specialists in breakneck entertainment. It was produced by George Lucas, the mastermind behind the Star Wars movies. It was directed by Steven Spielberg, who made Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind before he bombed a year and a half ago very badly with 1941. Well, he's back on the track now. Mm -hmm. Raiders of the Lost Ark hurdles us through a cascade of nonstop adventures. It has everything. Forgotten tombs, giant tarantulas, evil, bloodthirsty Nazis, thousands of poisonous snakes, and the best chase scene I've ever seen in a movie. I really love this one. Well, so did I, and I can't recommend a film more than this one. Um, I sat there really admiring it. Mm -hmm. I just said, look at how tight this is. Look at how excellent it is. It's, it, it attempts so much and hits so close mm -hmm. all the time. I really applaud all the people who had to produce this thing and make it, it's, it's marvelous. The one thing that uh, really impressed me is how they start out, as mm -hmm. you point out, with a great opening, mm -hmm. high energy. The, it could be the ending of any other picture, and we'd uh -huh. say, that yeah, was good. Uh -huh. It's the, just the beginning and then build up. Mm -hmm. Very impressive film. It's just, it has a wealth of imagination. It's just like nonstop details and situations. They go all around the world. There are adventures in South America, in uh, North Africa, in Tibet, in the mountains. There's a submarine. There's a car chase. There's a motorcycle. There's sure. a... Well, I keep going on like this. The giant boulder. We haven't even mentioned the boulder yet. It's just wonderful. And the thing that uh, I've been asked by some people is, who I saw the picture with, do you like it so much because it's been a rotten year and a half at the uh -huh. movies? Uh -huh. Well, yes, a little bit that. But I think if this film came out in any year, I would still love it this much.
<laughs> well, here's our own Raider of the Lost Dog, Spot the Wonder Dog, here to bark at the worst movies of the week. Well, my dog this week is Dead and Buried, a hideously gruesome thriller in which a crazed mortician, <laughs> Jack Albertson, can't stop with merely embalming people. He wants to make them live again in an East Coast seaport town named Potter's Bluff. <laughs> the ads for this film say it'll take your breath away. No, I just think it'll make you look away as we're forced to suffer through a scalp being peeled from a human head and a hypodermic needle stuck into the eyeball. Yuck, you can safely avoid seeing dead and buried. I believe you. My mm -hmm. dog this week is called Screamers, and it's like an anthology of ingredients from several different Hollywood garbage genres. <laughs> Screamers is being advertised like a bloody horror film with a warning of, you'll actually see a man turned inside out. Well, be warned, you never do in this film. <laughs> it's actually more of a bloody underwater adventure film about the lost continent of Atlantis. The movie stars Joseph Cotton as a mad scientist who's created a race of zombies who are half fish and half man. He's forced them to plunder the sunken continent of Atlantis and return all the gold to him. In the movie's climax, the amphibians turn against the humans, while meanwhile, back at the lost continent, a volcano explodes and the hero is trapped inside a flooded chamber. It's absolutely remarkable how Screamers manages to take all that material and make it boring, but it does. It was just awful. I saw it, and I, the worst scene in that picture is laughable. Barbara Bach feeds milk to all these men dressed up like yeah, lizards. Right. Just stupid. Terrific. So much for the dogs. <laughs> now to our reactions to the main movies on this show. Roger and I split on Cutter's Way, the murder mystery. Roger thought the story was disappointing and meandering. He votes no. He can't recommend you see it. I disagree. I like the mystery and the film's strange love triangle. I vote yes on Cutter's Way. We agree that Federico Fellini's City of Women is a minor Fellini effort a redundant examination of contemporary man befuddled by today's woman. This film might have been challenging five or ten years ago, not now. We split on the Simone Signore drama, I sent a letter to my love. Roger thought it was hackneyed sentimentalism. I enjoyed the film's bitter edge. One yes vote from me, a no from Roger. And finally, two very enthusiastic yes votes for Raiders of the Lost Ark, the year's most entertaining movie. In a nutshell, our review is don't miss it. And that's for sure, and that's it for this week. Next time on Sneak Previews, we'll review four more new movies, including Burt Reynolds in the cross-country comedy The Cannonball Run, Life in the Army with Bill Murray in Stripes, and Christopher Reeve romancing Margot Kidder in the summer's big sequel, Superman II. Until then, we'll see you at the movies. Funding for sneak previews was provided by this station and by other public television stations.